This is a Howard Miller 613108 and I paid $15 for this at a secondhand store and uh, it certainly wasn't working as you'll see in this rest of this video and this is just about repairing this clock and uh, what I went through. I'm happy to say that I only spent uh, $15 plus about $7 in uh, oil just to uh, oil it up a little bit but I definitely had to do a little bit of repair here and there otherwise it's fantastic it works great the chimes are uh, magnificent and um, it's just it's a real uh, mechanical beauty okay so I've got my pendulum here this is the bottom part that swings here's the um, top part and this has to be uh, installed uh, just like this okay and then it swings back and forth now one of the main challenges is how to do it so I've already put in a line to uh, in the center as much as I absolutely could um, gets gets a little tricky I don't have exactly the most precise saw uh, so unfortunately it is what it is um, the attachment that originally uh, went with this is, is no longer available I, when I got it uh, it didn't come with it so I've got to kind of make my own now the two challenges that I have is to um, get this so it attaches properly and then if you take a close look here even if I get it attached well you see how that swings back and forth well that's a very small swing but when it is attached at the fulcrum at the very top here what's going to happen is that swing is going to amplify and as it's swinging back and forth look at that this erratic noise basically this erratic behavior and this is why the clock isn't working um, so however I make this I have to make sure that the mechanism is as center as possible and that it does not uh, move at all so the first thing I'm gonna do is um, and I've already done is I've drilled a hole uh, in the center and uh, I wanted to try and find a thin screw uh, but a screw may actually add more mass on one side and could actually affect the clock. So what I'm going to do instead is I have this pin right here. I'm going to take this, drill a hole through here so it's perfectly center, just like this. So, um, you know, I have to work with what I have. I don't have anything that's going to be as good of a thickness. I don't have anything this diameter. Every I've searched my shop and there's nothing quite perfect in that and I don't have any screws that will work in that um, even for me to something as simple as test it. So what I'm gonna do is I've got to test some holes and see if I can find a hole that uh, perfectly fits this diameter as tight as possible. might be it definitely larger let's see hey there we go all right so the goal is to get this pin to fit as tight as possible because we're gonna use just the friction of it and I think let's see so I can barely push in there but that's enough I think for that friction to really hold on so this is what we're this is what we want right here and as you can see, you know, the goal here is obviously trying to get it as straight as absolutely possible. All right, so we have the moment of truth. Let's see if this can get... Put the pin on the side. Push it in just so. There it is, starting to peep out. So now I'm going to insert the center pendulum. This part goes to the uh, clock itself. Try and align it. All right. And so, of course, now the goal is going to be to get it through that very tight spot and out to the other side without breaking anything. It's going to be the tough part. All right. So let me just center. 
center this. All right, so this is center. It's the way I want it. Um, I'm not going to see this part. It's not visible in the clock, so I'm not too worried about what it looks like. Um, although the most important thing here is that the distribution of each mass is uh, as even as possible. So I'll get my calipers out, potentially measure it. We'll see if it matters that much. Hmm. Okay, if you take a look at this top piece, you'll notice that it's a little bit of, it's loose. It gives a little bit. That's going to be an issue because as this is swinging and it stops, we'll have a mass and you can see that I'm moving this very, very little, but look, I'm certainly not moving it that much and that's going to be the issue. As it's going up, this may, this extra movement right here is going to cause the mechanism not to work. In fact, as I'm doing this, I can feel how it's bumping back and forth and obviously a mechanism that's very sensitive it's not going to work very well so I've got to find a way to tighten this hinge up so that it uh, doesn't do this um, so if you recall I took apart a printer a while back and I had an encoder that I removed while well, I'm wrapping this encoder around this metal piece and I'm pushing it in here just temporarily and I'm realizing very quickly that this may actually be the solution. As I'm holding this now, I get very, very little movement. Very tight and cozy within these two pieces, this, this metal shaft and this wood pendulum. So now as I'm moving it back, I don't feel that it's give. In fact, it feels more like I'm going to bend this metal, so I don't want to do that. This is the back of the um, Howard Miller. Uh, timepiece clock. Here's the numbers in the back of it. Okay. And what I need to do is attach this pendulum uh, to this point right here. And as you see, it'll swing to the left and to the right. Now, when I receive this um, piece, this is the part that was bent. So it would only go, it would go from here, I don't want to bend it back, but it would go from here, let's say, and then it would stop in the center. It wouldn't go to the left and to the right halfway. It would just use all the space that it had to go only to the right. And the issue was this was just bent, right, right here at that elbow. Let me see if I can zoom in. So why this is a big deal is because that may very well be the only problem. And if that's the only problem, uh, then this $900 clock that's the current value now. I don't know what it's worth. Right. So, as we see, it's connected. All right. Zoom out. All right. Let's give it a whirl. Hey. Hey, you want to help wind the clock? You want to get started? Okay. All right, buddy, here's going to get started. All right, ready? All right, give it a push. Very nice. So I was pretty confident uh, that the issue uh, was this suspension spring right here. And I was in the midst of uh, ordering one, trying to get the right measurements with my, uh, with my calipers. And then uh, I was playing around because I know that the clock should have a certain tick. <clears throat> and I realized that um, there's an alignment issue here, and uh, I will show you where that is right now. Here we go. Now take a look what happens when I raise this, because if you, if, I don't know if you can hear this, but listen.
It sounds like it should on the right hand side, but on the left hand side it sticks a little bit. See that? See that fight? I've got a fight to bring it over here. So I thought maybe it's dragging on the side and then take a look at this. If I raise this, look at that. All by itself. So I think that's what maybe the issue was here. It's misaligned. So I'm going to tighten this as it's ticking itself. Alright, now let's hook up this pendulum back. So we'll give it a minute and we'll see if perhaps this was the issue. Uh, it certainly swings considerably better and on its own uh, now. Or perhaps that's the way that it should sound, since if you take a look at that gear that's moving inside, um, it's not symmetrical, as it should not be. I'm certainly no clock expert. I haven't gone to clock school, so I don't really know for sure. Um, what I do know is it certainly seems to be uh, functioning, so I'm pretty satisfied so it seems maybe the previous owners just um, probably what's common is they left the pendulum in there they were moving with it and they uh, misaligned it I'm surprised the suspension spring wasn't more damaged but this was misaligned uh, this was a bit lower than this side and that caused uh, the clock not to um, swing back and forth on its own Sounds like we're hitting two notes here. Right. Let's see if I can... Oh, there's the issue right there. There it is. Take a look. We've got two that are two chimes that are touching each other. Alright, not the way to fix it, so watch aficionados, uh, close your eyes. Uh, let's see, this is bent there. There we go. So now it's just uh, as close to symmetric as I can get it. Let me try this again now. <laughs> 